Chris, I think we're on air. Awesome. And today we have a guest speaker who is way smarter than the two of us. So I hope this gets even more exciting than the last sessions. And his name is Dr. Nikolai Kobyshev. He's our CTO. Hey there, everyone. Hey there, everyone. I doubt that I'm smarter, but I'm uh, very happy to be here. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time, Nikolai. So um, we thought we thought uh, quite some time what we should do our next episode on. Um, and uh, we've walked through, you know, the events layer of our system, right, where we detect the different events of a turnaround. Um, we also talked about safety in, in the last in the last episode where we discussed, you know, how can you actually uh, use computer vision and, and all the other stuff that Asaya does to improve the safety on the apron. So for us, the ne natural next step actually is to go away from the sensor and data acquisition level more towards how can, what can you actually do based on this data? How can you improve your processes uh, downstream even more and, and higher level than just you know, tactical interventions into turnarounds? So we're going to talk about off-block time prediction today. And Chris, I'd like to hand the word over to you to discuss how, how OBT prediction fits into our overall you know, vision of how we see the future. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Max. So I think what you see on the screen now is, is, is sort of a very brief overview of how we see um, the, the total domain of where we're active in. And you know, the, the, the data collection is basically on the lowest layer, what we call automated data collection and processing. Um, which today we obviously do using computer vision, um, but I think there's even other interesting opportunities to use other uh, unstructured data sources for, for automated data collection. Um, and today what we're talking about, uh, especially is predicted off-block time. Um, and then this sits in the middle part, um, which, is, which is now a bit covered, but it's called analytics and predictions. And basically it builds on top of that data that we actually generate ourselves. So um, what we basically do is we take all the data that we generate ourselves and then combine that with other data sources. And Nikolai will talk a little bit more about how that exactly works in a minute. Um, and we will then predict when an aircraft is actually um, ready to go off blocks and, and, and depart. And the interesting part here is that you don't just know what's happening right now, but you actually have pretty accurate idea of what's going to happen in the future. And the interesting part is if you think about um, airports, airport operations, or even the entire aviation uh, system, everything sort of depends on when are aircrafts introduced into the system. So when do they actually go from the stand onto the taxiway, onto the runway, and then into the airspace? Um, and then again, when do they, when are they taken out of the system? So when do they go back onto a parking stand? And by knowing more accurately, um, you know, when those moments are, you can actually optimize everything. And as, as the space is already highly constrained, both on the ground as well as in the air, there's tons of initiatives to optimize airspace usage, optimize runway usage, optimize taxiway usage. But all those optimizations, they basically depend on the quality of the input data. Because if you're trying to make that optimization, trying to lay that puzzle with the wrong pieces, you're always gonna get it wrong. So what we're trying to do in that middle block analytics and predictions is basically improve the inputs for those kind of optimizations in order to make sure that they can do a better job and create can create better outputs, which will result in less fuel burn because there will be less aircrafts queuing up on the taxiways, um, less fuel burn because aircrafts will be planned better in the air with less holding, shorter routing, um, less delays for that same matter, um, lower costs, therefore, for the airlines, higher asset utilization for the airports. Um, so yeah, there's a ton of benefits by you know just improving those inputs for optimization efforts and frameworks that are actually already there. And when you talk about optimization frameworks, you talk about you know gate allocation, GSE allocation, and so on. So this is essentially the basic data that then flows into another system that then optimizes based on this data. And because this data is you know five times, 10 times better than the current data that's available, these optimizers will also turn out an, a much better result than today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
and maybe one anecdote um i was once spent a day with 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 one of our major ground handler in uh at an airport in in scandinavia and um the interesting part was there that you know in their control center they actually plan their resources their crews so they're the, the pushback tugs and the loading crews um according to when an aircraft arrives um and then the, the planet the crews to the next ones uh depending on you know when the aircraft is expected to be done and go off block so if they get this off block moment right the crew is actually already supposed to be at the next turnaround but they're not there because they're still at the previous one and the same goes for stand allocation it quite happens actually in most airports on a daily basis that an aircraft that lands goes to a specific stand and what it's fine there the stand is not empty it's still occupied just because nobody knew that this plane that was already there was delayed and wasn't accurately updated right and i guess that's a motive that we see repeatedly and if you look at the you know existing software solutions we heard also multiple times that there is you know the situation that there is actually a software that shows you if a gate is occupied or not but if that plane is towed out of the position actually the software doesn't update right so you still think there's a plane at this gate while it's no longer there which obviously also inhibits you as, as the airport or the gate allocator to do the best job you can in in uh, using your your assets in the most efficient manner yeah yeah it's it's, it's almost uh it's it's, it's it's a bit scary to realize that yeah just finding out if a plane is on a stand or not and when this plane, how long is, is it still going to be there, which sounds very basic, is still a really big problem in the industry. I agree. Yeah, that's, that's actually pretty surprising. Cool. Um, so why don't we do, after, after we, I guess, understood where this all fits in and, and why this layer is so important, um, why don't we do a deep dive on, on what we learned uh, over the last, you know, two years about off-block time prediction? Um, Nikolai, over to you. Thanks, Max. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, Chris has summarized it pretty, pretty nicely. So if you want to control anything, for example, an airport, you literally cannot do it without looking into the future. All your decisions, all your control decisions have a certain kind of estimation of how the future would look like. And currently what we observe, unfortunately, it's very, very basic how, how, the, how the future of the airport is predicted. So you essentially say, okay, the plane comes to the gate and we know it will take roughly 45 minutes until it leaves. And that's, that's more or less the quality of, of estimations which is done now, which is, which is obviously very, 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 very sad because you can actually, with, with having better predictions, you can have much uh, more fine grain control over, over the airport. So. What what, what Nicolai, just do? How... just sorry, just out of curiosity, is is the um, is the actual off block time normally distributed? Uh, I actually didn't didn't check that. Okay, but I, I'm pretty sure it is. Okay. So 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 the at least the, the, the fundamental processes which are determining the 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 off block time as uh, there is a lot of them and they are all more or less randomly distributed so this year it is okay but uh, that that needs to be checked the the problem however as i've just highlighted in the previous sentence answering to the max's question is that there is too many factors which essentially affect the the off block time too many factors which are all individually very much under it's very clear how every individual factor affects the off block time. So for example, it's, it's pretty predictable that the plane which is full is more likely to be delayed than a plane which, is, which has three passengers on board, just because every passenger has some likelihood of, of uh, delaying the system by causing some, some trouble and so on and so forth. But unfortunately, there is uh, so many factors and each factor doesn't have a definitive predictive power, but you need to have some tools to combine it into the, into the off block time prediction. And uh, I would say we have two major classes of information we can use to, to deliver this off block time prediction. So the first one is uh, general metadata about the, the plane. So this is, for example, the type of the aircraft, the destination of the aircraft, the number of passengers, the number of luggage, and all these little things, uh, or for example, the weather information at the day of the flight. So all these little things contribute uh, some information towards predicting the off-lock time prediction. 
And although for, for humans, it's basically that's what humans call intuition. They can draw some conclusions based on that, but uh, w these conclusions are actually summarized in TOBT, so-called. It's target offload time, which you see in the, t in the column in the middle here. So here you see the quality of the intervals. Uh, Max is just highlighting that. Uh, Max, is, uh, you see the quality of, uh, so for example, for TOBT, in 32% of cases, you have the error which is uh, within three minutes of the actual offload time. And within 80% of cases, you have an error of plus minus 15 minutes. So although humans can do some kind of prediction based on intuition, it is, it is very clear that machines can do it better just because there is no bias and there is uh, some machines are capable of and, uh, taking all this information from different, uh, different uh, sources and make just the, the most optimal decision for such a case, which is unfortunately some kind of nature of limitation of our brain. We cannot really take all the information from different sources and properly prioritize it so that we can take the best decision. So machines are so so this is the first the first class of of information that you can use to predict your offload time. Unfortunately we don't have it in this slide, but you can show that this makes the prediction already much better than just target offload time. Uh, however, one can argue that, of course, just having some metadata about the plane will show some, some historic correlations. For example, you know that fully loaded planes are more likely to be delayed, or planes with, with no luggage are less likely to be delayed. That's all fine, but uh, in a way, this is all the knowledge we, we, we capture before the plane, uh, be, before the turnaround starts. However, one can argue that the whole process of turnaround unfolding can influence offload time a lot. And that's actually what we observe. So uh, as you know, we, we can generate pretty accurate timestamps of different events that happen at the, on the tarmac with the plane, for example, when the luggage loading starts, when the passengers start loading, when, when cleaning starts, when catering starts, and so on and so forth. So we thought it's actually a very, very reasonable idea to add this data to the, to the predictor itself. And apart from the uh, from the metadata that I've listed before, you can also use this information to increase the quality of the predict even further. And uh, this has uh, brought us to surprisingly good numbers. They are shown in the left uh, table in the left uh, column of the table. You see that the system is capable of predicting the 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 plane leaving with the error of plus minus fifteen minutes with almost hundred percent, and uh, the five minute quality is achieved with 85%. And uh, this, is, this is by far not the, the best quality you can get from the system. We're constantly working on improving it. But it sounds like a very natural idea to use visual information and metadata about the plane to actually predict when it is living. We see that it works uh, very well in, in all the experiments we're running. And we also, as Chris has highlighted already, know that this is very, very important for for planning the uh, planning different operations at the airport, essentially controlling the airport, because the main resource of the airport is the so 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 the main thing you want to do to run a proper airport is to manage your plane right, to put them to the proper gates, to make sure that they're serviced by the by the right equipment at the right time, to so so essentially this this whole resource distribution of distributing the the teams of people working on the plane. We could just, uh, distributing the, the the equipment working on the plane, distributing the planes over different gates. This is this is the key component of the airport management task. And without uh, proper predictions of how the how the airport will function in the next uh, half an hour, two hours, it is almost impossible to do it, to do it really properly. That's why we think that these uh, predictions bring bring so high value to the airport operation. And I guess to put it in, in a few mathematical terms, let's, if, if we assume you know that um, off-block times are normally distributed, what we're essentially doing is we are making this normal distribution, um, how would you call this shape versus this shape? We make it less shallow, Nikolai? Uh, you make it more pointy, I think. More pointy, okay, whatever. But I guess the point is you have better data because it's, it's, it's closer to the truth, right? Um, and this means that downstream, if you think about TSE allocation, if you think about gate allocation, 
um, you need less uh, backup, less overhead, less excess resources. Because, you know, if you plan, let's say, on this year or on this year, you have, you have to hold uh, much higher excess assets versus if, if you, know, you know your bandwidth is, is somewhere here, actually, right, in terms of OBT. Exactly. So you just get much more certainty into the future. Right. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for... The, the thing is that if you, if, if, you, uh, if you know exactly how your, how your turnarounds will unfold, and yeah. allocating your resources is, is is very easy like everyone can do right that. but the the whole the whole cornerstone of this problem is actually you don't know how the future will look like yeah so you can use some optimizations or some heuristics but but it's, it's very essential to get them as accurate as possible and i firmly believe that we are taking a new step here by by using all the available information using the best no i agree to... and and if you assume that this would be you know ideal because it would provide ideal future future prediction um, we are trying to get as close as possible in terms of the distribution of, of output right to this and i think what we're doing is already a huge step if you look at how we how we make that distribution way more pointy i think that's it's pretty impressive actually the numbers super cool chris do you have some some final words maybe last thing that that i was thinking about when when nikolai was talking um is it what, what always what, what i really like about this topic is that the confirmation that you know this is essential is, is basically already there because if we look at the the initiatives across uh collaborative decision making mm -hmm. cdm uh, acdm uh, total airport management they all try to tackle this problem and they've made great strides in terms of uh making definitions uh aligning those across the industry um trying to pull together as much data as possible in order to achieve that goal and so much investment has already gone into that and i think we're what we're just trying to do is to basically uh put a turbo on on all those efforts and uh make sure that you know all the business cases that were made back in the day that that will finally that they'll be able to make those business cases um by improving the inputs for all those mechanisms I just came across by coincidence on this TOBT page uh, from, from Farport, right? And they say, who sets the TOBT? The person responsible for TOBT as defined by aircraft operator, each handling agent. Now that's highly schizophrenic, right? Because the handling agent is adversely incentivized to actually set, for example, a delayed uh, TOBT early on in the process because they know um, that they would get, you know, some some of the delay calls most most likely attributed to them. So that's also a system, yeah. systemic flaw in the system that I think we also talked about already. It's 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 not untypical for the industry uh, that it goes like this, um, but it's it's also very clear that it doesn't work like this. I think another example that almost everyone working in an airport will realize is knowing you know what's when is the first bag on the reclaim belt, when is the last bag on the reclaim belt. Uh, often airports install buttons there. And the ground handler is then instructed to press the button when he puts the first bag and the last <laughs> bag onto the belt. <laughs> like it's, it's uh, there's a there was a commercial I think in the 70s in the Netherlands, and uh, it was a, it was a product for cleaning toilets. It was called VC Ain't, which translates to toilet duck. And and what they and, and what they said at the end of the commercial is, we from VC Ain't advise you to use VC Ain't, and that's exactly exactly what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's i think another another way how we as a side can help um airports operate more efficiently uh because you know gates will will be used more efficiently if you have better data there airlines because they have less situations where delays you know surprise delays accrue and also ultimately ground handler right because they can yeah. They can uh, dispatch their resources more accurately. Just think about these different value at normal distribution, like shapes, right? They can distribute their assets better and, and thus also be, be more efficient. Cool. Many yeah. thanks, guys. That Thank was you exciting. Too. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.